But the prognosis is, it's all right. Like that famous Ray Charles song. Everything is all right. It always has been. You know, we're lying on the breast of Nirvana, of mother, mother, of mother emptiness. But he didn't really elaborate all those things. He didn't emphasize that. He just said he was very minimalistic, knowing that these self-torturing, self-centered, deeply self-escaping people would be contemptuous of someone who said this is all fine <laughs> right away. You know? And all he said was, there is a freedom from this suffering. So there is a cure, in other words, which is the prognosis, right? Then the therapy, fourth noble truth. There is a path to the prognosis, to the, to the nirvana, to the freedom from suffering. There is a, a route you can take, you know, because I know that you don't feel that it is your present reality, and I'm not pushing non-duality on you. Oh, I am actually hinting at it, but I'm not pushing it. Uh, I'm just saying there is a freedom giving you that in much encouragement. And then I know you're going to misinterpret that initially, but maybe because of the way the path is, it's an educational path. So it has eight components, that education. And I know you'll find your way there. And I'm encouraging you from the outset that you can. Of course, an educator who has realized, of course, because see, one thing that he realized, he also is not omnipotent. Buddha is not omnipotent either. And he realized that he had to realize this reality of himself, himself. And he couldn't, no, no, no verbal formulaic teaching that he would be given by another, even another Buddha, would be in, uh, sufficient, no authority, in other words, would be sufficient to enable him to realize his own reality. He had himself to explore and to find it, and he had the capability to do it. His intelligence, his human intelligence, enabled him to do it. And therefore, other humans could do it. So that's it. so he had to tell his potential students that they could, if they followed the path, reach freedom from suffering. Because that's, other people were not saying that. His colleagues were saying, oh, you, you know, there were others who said, well, you don't have to do anything. It'll just happen to you at some point. Others were saying, God will... God will save you. Others were saying, you don't need to be saved because you don't exist. That's what modern materialists tell you, actually. Ultimately, you don't need to be saved, just die. And then you won't exist, so you won't suffer. They do uphold. They hold out that promise, just like any priest, a natural scientist. I'm sorry, but they do. They're just like high priests, actually. In my university, they are the high priests. Uh, later. And, and they promise you annihilation, which, you know, you're supposed to think that's really will suck because I won't be able to have burgers anymore. <laughs> or, or nice, clean, holistic, vegetarian food. But, but on the other hand, I won't suffer. I'll be that, so that's cool. I'm guaranteed anesthesia. I'm guaranteed permanent Motrin in, in a lethal dose. So I, I'll be free of anxiety, depression, and addiction. So... So, so they weren't telling them that. Whereas Buddha said, no, you, have, you can realize your true nature and your real nature. And when you do, you will be free of that suffering because you have put a stop to the cause of it, which is the delusion. Because your understanding and your realization of, the, of your true nature is a wisdom, which is the opposite of delusion. It's realism. It's realistic awareness of the nature of reality. Okay? So now we come to the Eightfold Path, and, uh, which is the 